Hello everyone and welcome to a new video from your Overwatch. I'm Eddie the Chump and today we're going to be going through a lot of Baptiste's main ability interactions. There are some easy rules to understand but also some oddities which you'd be advised to take note of when either playing as or up against Overwatch's new hero. Thankfully we're going to explain all this so you don't have to spend hours testing yourself. First up, let's talk about Baptiste's most unique ability, his immortality field. How this actually functions is that when placed down it will give anyone within a minimum of 20% of their base HP. If you're below that number it'll technically heal you up to that. So a 200 HP squishy gets a minimum of 40 HP whereas a tank like Rhine gets 100. It can indeed be hacked by a Sombra which just disables the device and not turns it to your team's favour which might have been nice if a little overpowered. It cannot be deflected by Genji or eaten by D.Va and it also passes through all barriers like Rhine Shield or even Sims Ultimate. It will keep you alive and stop a status effect like Ash's TNT burn from killing you but it will not cleanse you from things like the burn or Anna's Bionade. So you need to be careful because if it's destroyed before the burn effect finishes it can actually kill you afterwards. Now onto some of the most eye-catching utility that it can provide. It will in fact save you from a diva bomb even if the bomb is right next to you. The field beacon will get destroyed by the bomb and you will go down to that 40 HP minimum if you're a squishy but at least you will have survived to possibly fight another day. Perhaps just as importantly the immortality field will save you from a Hanzo dragon ultimate and the dragon will not destroy the beacon just like it can't hurt Torb turrets. Ultimates like Farah Barrage will kill the beacon but until they do you'll survive meaning it's practically useful as a defense option because Farah can struggle not to die before kills are confirmed anyway. That is of course unless you're in some kind of bee conception where the enemy Farah also has an immortality field at her disposal. Now thanks to some improvements that Soldier got to his ultimate, his ult will target the beacon and enemies. Whereas McCree's Deadeye only targets enemy players. And with Soldier's improvement to his base damage in the same patch, Sight might kill your immortality field a bit quicker than you're expecting. So be very careful of that interaction. You also need to be careful of where you place the immortality field because Torb and Sim turrets will shoot the beacon as will Bob. In Torb's case this can be extra useful if you're trying to destroy it because your turret will shoot whatever you shoot. For my fellow Ana players I'm sad to say that Sleep Dart will not disable the beacon so don't even bother to try. You can sleep Omnic robots but not unthinking machines. This logic makes no sense. Game completely unplayable. So functionally Immortality Field will stop you from dying from any damage source in the game. However you do have to be careful of the damage sources that can also also be shooting it at the same time as shooting you. We're going to be moving on to Baptiste's amplification matrix now and there are a lot of quite interesting interactions to explore. First up, I think the only thing that can actually destroy it in the entire game is Sombra's EMP which will do so instantly. What with Sombra's hack being one of the fastest ways to disable the immortality field, I do expect Baptiste mains to grow to hate her. Now on to what the ultimate actually does. It will double any applicable damage or healing that passes through it. Let's deal with the damage part first. Any projectile or hit scan damage is affected, like McCree's here and Zen's orbs. Zen can do almost 1000 damage with a full charge shot through this thing. Widow can also one shot a 600 HP Roadhog. Reaper obviously gets the bonus for his regular fire and ultimate but also receives a bonus to the lifesteal health he gets back. It does make sense, do more damage, get more health. Simple. In fact a lot of the Overwatch's cast's base damage will get the double damage bonus when being fired through. These include things like fire rockets, junk rack grenades and mines, Genji shurikens. I actually think it's more helpful if I point out the weapons and damage sources that don't receive a bonus. Beam weapons like Sim and Zarya's aren't affected by the Matrix, the same goes for Winston's Tesla cannon. However both Sim and Zarya's alternate fire does get the bonus because they're projectiles. No melee damage in the game is affected and I'll point out some prominent examples a little bit later. As an exemplar of this, Lucio's regular damage does get the bonus but his right click boop does not. How Amplification Matrix interacts with things like Damage Amp is also really key to understand. This is because in the same patch that Baptiste came into the game there were some changes to these mechanics. So what happens is if you boost a friendly, in this case Baptiste with Mercy, he will get the 30% from the damage amp and his base damage will get doubled as he shoots through the amplification matrix. 
So here Baptiste shoots Roadhog in the head for 150 damage if every bullet crits. Matrix turns that into 300 and the Mercy boost gives him a bonus 45, which is derived from 30% of his base 150 before it passes through the Matrix, resulting in a final total of 345 damage. Matrix will not count damage amp and base damage as a lump figure and then double that. Damage amps can stack, obviously, and you'll get that combined bonus for those amps, but it will not then be doubled by Matrix. Otherwise, things could get out of hand very, very quickly. Now we're going to look at some more detailed examples of some of the most important damage sources and abilities that Amplification Matrix does or doesn't work with. Let's return to melee for the moment. Although the rule appears quite simple, there are some instances where certain heroes themselves arguably become a projectile. Somewhat sadly, I have to report that things like Ryan's pin are not affected. His fire strike is, but his pin isn't. And it's the same for Earthshatter. Likewise, Genji's Dash and Doomfist's Rocket Punch and Slam don't receive any bonus. However, things do get a little bit less straightforward when we're talking about projectiles. For instance, Ash's TNT impact and burn damage do get doubled by Matrix, yet Widow's Venom Mine doesn't. From the ultimate category, May's Blizzard will have double damage from its freeze effect if thrown through, but Zarya's Graviton is unchanged. Hanzo's Dragon doesn't get amplified, but the arrow that he shoots actually does. And no, Diva Bomb will not do 2000 damage if fired through the Matrix. In what I think is a bit of a missed trick, Torb's ultimate doesn't get any bonus damage either. And I know I'm talking about projectiles at the moment, but I just want to bring up McCree's Deadeye, as it is a very odd case. The damage boost isn't factored into its charge time, but the bullet you fire will do double damage, even allowing you to kill targets sometimes that don't have skulls on them. Very, very odd. However, I guess if you combine Amplification Matrix with an Immortality Field, at least McCree has a chance of surviving his own ultimate now. Moving on, a lot of the other damage sources and ultimates behave a lot more directly. Farah's Barrage gets a ridiculous bonus through Matrix, becoming super scary. Tracer's Pulse Bomb also gets double damage if thrown through it. 600 HP bombs, that's a bit more like it. And Soldier's Ult is nothing to mess with. He now does 20 damage per bullet instead of 19. Bastion is a particular powerhouse as well when combined with Baptiste's ultimate. His regular damage in both forms and his ultimate's tank cannon will be doubled if Baptiste puts a matrix in front of him. And there's good news for at least one hero that makes use of a turret. Torb's turret will have its damage doubled, as will Bob in fact, as he's technically just a giant turret with a very cool hat. But his initial charge doesn't get a bonus, much like Ryan's pin and Genji's dash that we explained earlier. Sim's turrets sadly are unaffected as they're beams, even if the turret projectile is fired through the matrix before it activates, and believe us we tried. So as you can see, the rules about what damage is amplified by the matrix are in fact quite simple, but with a few very notable exceptions and oddities. Now let's finally move on to how healing works with it. Only certain types of healing are affected. Moira's Regular Grasp, Mercy Pocket, Brig Armor Pack and Inspire Passive, Lucio's Amp and Zen Harmony Orb receive no bonus. Moira's Healing Orb does get some kind of bonus as in it deploys its fixed amount of health faster, but it doesn't actually do more. This is the same for her damage variant as well. Anna's regular shots and Bionade do get the bonus, although the additional health from receiving Nano is unchanged. And of course, Baptiste's own projectile healing will be doubled by Matrix. Somewhat thankfully, none of the channeling support alts receive any bonus whatsoever. You can see this in this Moira example, as Coalescence healing and damage is unaffected. That's the same for Mercy Valk, Trans, drop the beat and rally. One interesting interaction is that Baptiste's healing grenades when deflected by Genji don't cause any damage, or in fact, heal anyone on that Genji's team. Maybe that'll get changed later, although I can understand somewhat why they've left it that way. And that just about wraps it up for our Baptiste interactions guide. Are there any in particular that you guys agree or disagree with strongly? Say it with me, Ryan Pin is a projectile. And while we're at it, actually spare a thought for Paul Winston, he got basically nothing cool from Baptiste being put in the game, whereas everyone else I think got at least something, even if it was pretty small. I suppose Immortality Field can start 
stop him getting completely blown up. So hey, silver linings and all that. I will just say at the end, throughout all of the interactions with most of the cast in the game, I did notice a thread. Sombra does appear to have Baptiste's number. If you struggle against him when he goes live, remember the Mexican hacker. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a rating. If you never want to miss another video of ours again, please click the bell icon next to the subscribe button to join the notification squad. You'll be in great company. And finally, please follow the your Overwatch Twitter. It's where you can find updates about new videos and other cool stuff. I've been Eddie the Chump, and until next time, 